I'm Cody Alexander with MassCourse.com. Today I'm here talking to you about using Huddle Beta to create an in-season opponent scouting report. Most of us have our own process. What Beta has really done is allowed you to uh, cut down on the paperwork. You can kind of go through and pick what you want out. Something that I really like about it is that anything that I want data point-wise, I can just go and click on it. I don't need uh, to run a full report. I don't have to sit there and create, especially cut up. Now, I still create cut ups. So I'm going to kind of go through my whole process with this. Um, but for me, what Huddle Beta has really done is been able to kind of cut down that, cut the fat down, gives you the percentages, what you need. You can easily see tendencies uh, in, in that. So what I'm going to go through is kind of go go how I use uh, Huddle Beta to create my own opponent scout. So I'm going to show you how I kind of use Huddle Beta to figure out how I'm going to go about this. Uh, I already have my cutouts already done. This is this is for us. We're going to play them uh, Gravy High School in the scrimmage. So uh, I don't have very much to go off of from last year other than I think we've got like oh, 60 plays from kind of the time scrimmage. Now, what I always like to do if I early in the season, if I know that I've got all I have is scrimmage tape, I really only want that clock time. Uh, and I kind of keep everything with a grain of salt. Um, like, for instance, there's no motion in the in the scrimmage at all. Um, so for me, I'm just I, I keep it I keep it easy for for the kids. Hey, we need like this formation like that. And then my cut ups, they're not as you know, they're not going to be um, as robust as they would later on in the season. So for me, I always start out with by creating a cut up of all all the defense. So all of or an all O cut up. Uh, for this one, because it was a scrimmage, it was all of our defense from last year. So normally I label that all O. I have an all pass. I have an all run. Then I have an early down. So anything that is really first and second, less than six. From there, I'll go to second and seven plus. Then I do third and one to six. And the only reason why I have third and one to six and not third and one to three is that we don't have a short yardage on third down in this. We only had two of them in the scrimmage. So uh, six ended up being where they where uh, after six they ended up started passing so I cut the number down uh, to third and seven plus they only had uh, four formations in the entire scrimmage so I have ten personnel two by two run ten personnel two by two passes then I have uh, ten personnel uh, three by one runs and passes and then I have all FIB I only got two clips of eleven personnel um, so we just need to be able to line up to it and play it uh, now. We may get it sometime in the team, but in terms of like what I'm going to game plan for, how I'm going to attack that, I'm not, I'm not real worried about it, especially in scrimmage. Uh, they did run some FIB stuff, so I'm going to do that. I think the most important thing in any of these is that these need to be sorted. Uh, so if you look at my runs, everything here is sorted. Everything here is sorted um, most to least. So if I drag this up, you can see how everything's sorted most to least. It's a G wrap was the number one thing. Inside zone was the number number one A and one B, and then they ran some speed option. Uh, so you can see that. If I go to passes, you can see too again that I have this uh, also sorted. Switch go was the number one thing out of two by two. Then we have a jailbreak. Apache with the jailbreak looks like a double screen, and then you can start getting into their concept. So when I'm building a hit chart uh, for this, all of these will go on there. Uh, and so this allows me to do this. Now, the nice thing about the hit chart is that you can make a written hit chart off of this, off of this beta, because it's just it's so easy because you just cl click in there and get all this. These these uh, cut ups are more or less for um, opponents, but I just want to make sure um, that you guys saw this is how this is how I go this is how I go about um, creating the cut ups. Uh, and then even like with FIB, you can see. We only got one shot of trips into the boundary, but everything else was uh, double. So I can see here, okay, hey, when they go in, it is still about 50-50, but we need to be alert for the switch go because they never threw the switch. Into, when the back was into the boundary, it was always um, some sort of a screen or a deep shot. Um, and then we even got a deep switch. So what I'm thinking is anytime I get the back, I, I got to be alert for a deep shot. So that's something that's for to tell your secondary guys. Hey, real quick. Hey, if that backs into the boundary, I need to think a deep shot right now. Regard, you know, depending on what coverage you're in, whoever needs to be the cap defender on that, they've already got kind of a sense of, of what they need to do. Now, in terms of what does an actual in-season cut-up list look like? So, for instance, we'll play Midlothian Heritage, they're one of the best teams in the state. So, in my opponent breakdown of them in the off-season, this is what this would look like. So, I have all the 
um, I have all the runs in a clip, all their twos in a clip. Now, the reason why I do this, and I always create an all category. I have an all D, I have an all run, and an all pass, because then I can always pull from that. I have a clinic look or a good look at all of their run concepts, their pass concepts, and it's just one clip. Um, shot tape. This is any ball that's going more than 20 yards down the field. This is a shot. They're taking a, They're taking the ball and they're pushing it down the field. And then here at all my third down, uh, the one I do probably need to add in here that I have on this one, on the other one, is uh, the early downs in there. Um, I have the the red zone, high red, low red, which some people call that goal line. Uh, backed up. What are they doing when they're backed up inside their 20 to 15? All the motions are going to be in there. Outside run gap runs, inside runs. So really, if you have a team that you play in that runs a lot of stretch or wide zone um, or option, I always put option in there. Um, or uh, like a power read when they're when they're using a, a stretch motion horizontal motion by the back. Anything that's trying to hit outside, I'm going to put that in there. A uh, gap scheme would be like your powers and your counters. Um, inside run, that's your split zone, insert, uh, or ISO. Uh, regular zones, uh, any read play, any play that I feel like they're letting the end loose. So some people play zone lock, and then every once in a while they'll just go zone read uh, to keep you honest. Uh, so anytime that they let that they let that D end go, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I tag that, and that looks different. Um, and then QB runs. Now, this is not option. This isn't when the QB kept the ball on a read or kept the ball in the option. This is designed quarterback runs. They're running quarterback power. They're running quarterback counter. They're running fast. And the court, you know, even then that's technically a read. So I, you know, QB runs, design QB runs, QB stretch, things like that. That's what I'm putting in there. Um, RPO and play action pass. Uh, a lot of times nowadays you can't tell difference. Um, so if you come over here in the past, you can see how some of these are switch goes, inside zone stops. So this is kind of an RPO. So as you look at it, they're showing inside zone, and then they're running the stop right here. So he's reading the overhang. He's got an option route to me. That's kind of an RPO. So what I will do is I'll go ahead and tag that as an RPO, and we'll keep that in there. Um, then I go P and 10. I want to know what they're doing in start of possessions, any unbalanced, any impure quads. I always do a three-by-one cut up. I think, it, I think to me, three-by-one anymore, that's where offenses are winning games. Um, the offenses that run a bunch of three-by-one tend to be a lot more successful. I, it just in my opinion, I don't have the analytics behind that. But to me, if I, I go and I look at some of the most successful offenses on, on Friday and, and really uh, Saturday and Sunday nights, it's teams that are using three by one to get the defense over rotated or to get the defense stuck in some sort of too high shell. And then they're just picking on you either in a light box or they're picking on you with through your cover. So I want to know what they're doing three by one. And so I make sure to keep that. So this is my cut up list. So this is what I'm doing pre beta. So this is everything I'm going to go through. Everything's put in here. I'm going to go through pre beta and make sure that I've got this, these, these cut ups done. And then I'm going to dive in. We're going to cut, we're going to go through this grand view tape and I'm going to kind of show you how I, I, I make that. So now I'm going to show you how I use huddle beta. So over here, you click huddle beta. I've got my all D for grand view. So I'm going to select that once it pops up. So I got my all D right here. What I like about this too is you can, if you wanted to do select cutups, you can, you can easily select those cutups. So I select all D. Um, the nice thing is, is that you have all this film right here and it has these. If you're looking to build an opponent scout, I always kind of make it the full screen. That way I kind of have all the tools at my disposal. Um, and the thing is, is that it has everything that you need right here. So I've got, I can click first down, second down, third down, fourth down. I can do all the distances I want. Uh, you can combine them. Everything's right there. Um, so I, I really I really like this. Um, the nice thing, too, is that you can get reports. I can click on that. I can instantly look at, hey, their top run is inside zone. g wrap the switch go is the, is the next play. Um, so all of that is, is really nice. If I look at this, I just see, hey, overall, 59% of the time they're passing the ball, 41% of the time they're running the ball. Um, so as I said, this is a scrimmage, so I don't have all the data in there and it's very limited, but it, I'm going to give you a, an idea of how I go about this to build, um, to build a, a, a really a hit chart. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to know what the personnel is. Well, they're 93% 10 personnel. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. 
from there, I want to know what the set is. Is it two by two or is it three by one? Well, they're 61% two by two, they're, they're 39% uh, three by one. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Now, now I could keep going with this formation. Well, they only ran it a uh, gun with, I call it twig splint. So they have the back set to where the number two receiver is on the ball. Sometimes this is a tell. Sometimes the kid just lined up wrong here to me. It looks like the kid probably just lined up wrong. They just lined up the kid on the, on the ball. Um, but if, if you start seeing tendencies sometimes, and I've seen this with teams, like they'll put number two on the ball to run the vertical. So you can tell who's running the vertical push and who's running the horizontal push uh, off of this. And so that's kind of a good tell. I think it's always good to, to not just not just concentrate on the set, but hey, what are they doing inside of this? So I want both of these um, when I'm going to do this. So I'm going to do I'm going to do a hit chart. So from here, I've got everything that I need. It's 57 pass and it's uh, 43 run, or it's 13 13 passes. And, and run. So what I could do now is I can come over here and I can click onto here and now I've got my hit chart and I can easily do this. So I know that there's 23 plays in here. I just said that there were 10 runs and that there were 13 passes, 13 passes. So I, I've, already, I've got that in there. I don't have to worry about opponent because we are the opponent. They're, they're going up against us. So now I need to go ahead. Um, I know, hey, I already said at the beginning, that there is no shifts no motion to this so I don't have to worry about this now I can check FIB to tell me times they put the running back into the boundary so I can build now my hit chart off of this okay and so it's easy now I just go over here I say okay I want all the runs what are the top runs I expand that report I got G wrap four times inside zone four times speed option two so I'm going to go over here okay I've got G wrap four times I've got inside zone Four times now I know a speed option to me speed option to me is an outside run play so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put command d and I'm going to duplicate this I'm, I'm on a mac it's control d if you're uh, on a on a, a, a laptop or a desktop and then I'm going to go speed option and they ran it twice now, what I'm going to do here is a speed option attacks this side and it's outside the box. So I'm going to set it outside the box. So I've got all of this. I've got all of this set up. So now instantly when I go here, I know, OK, well, they ran G wrap away from the back four times. And then they ran speed option to the back and it's outside the box uh, two times. Now, if you if you want to get really uh, critical about it, you can always lower it even but, but lower than those. So that way, you know, it's there. So it doesn't matter uh, however you want it to look. Um, but to me, now I know, okay, I've got outside hitting plays to the backers. I need to be worried about speed option. And then anything away from the back is going to be G-Rap or inside zone. Uh, we were four down last year. Uh, we're going to be four down this year. So I don't have to worry about, okay, well, are they doing G-Rap versus, uh, you know, a shade nose or are they doing uh, inside zone? Uh, so we should be – so now I can go back and look, okay, anytime the three technique was here – they were running inside zone, but if we set the free technique away, now we are running G-Rap. So I can create the looks that I want and then switch them up. So that's it. That's a, to me, this, this is a ding, 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 light bulb goes on. Okay, if they're even, then let's go back and let's take a look. I'm going to write this down. I'm going to take my pen I got in my notebook, and I'm going to say, okay, I need to go back to 10 personnel two by two, and I need to look at the front structure. When are they getting G-Rap? When are we getting inside zone? Because to me, if we're setting the nose to the running back and we're getting G wrap, well, that, that's the easiest way to do it. You know, because they're not running. I didn't tag it same side G wrap. If it was same side G wrap, so this guard right here, he was coming and pulling to the same side as the back, then I would have put an SS in front of that and it would have been same side G wrap. So I label same side run concepts for that reason. So right now I'm thinking in my mind, okay. We're getting G wrap when the nose is to the back, and then we're getting inside zone. So maybe this is the same play, but the G wrap is the tag for when they got the nose uh, to the running back. So right now, in my mind, I can already start game planning. I can, okay, how are we going to create ways where they think they've got something, but then they're not going to have it? So I've already built an idea. I got my pen. I am already wrote that down. Okay, I'm going to put down 10 personnel, two by two. Where is the nose? Where is the nose? I'm actually writing it down right now. Okay, so where is the nose? Okay, so now I know I can go back and I can look at that. 
All right, so now we've got the run game and I already got, I already got an idea off. So now I've come back. Now I can easily go look at all these GRATs because I'm already in beta. So I can go into beta and I can, I can go ahead and come over here and I can put it in, I want it, hey, I want it on, on the right or the left screen. So now I can go through all these GRATs and I can look, okay, nose is to the running back and we get a GRAT. All right, go to the next play. Nose is to the running back. I get a GRAT. I think we're seeing a trend here. Okay, nose is to the running back. Look what I got, GRAT, okay? I got one more to look at. Got the nose to the running back. Now I've got a GRAT. So now I am, now I know, okay, here we go. I've got something that I can look at. Uh, and now I can, and I can easily go and bounce back to do that. I don't have to get out of anything. I don't have to do, I, don't, I haven't run, you know, we used to have to run these massive reports and print them out, <laughs> excuse me. Now I can just go in there and I can, and I can figure it out on my own. Okay. So now I've got that. Now I, now I need to go, I'm going to, I'm going to click off one of my filters. I'm going to get running the, the G wrap and I'm going to get rid of runs. I'm going to go for passes and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to run a report. So now I know I've got switches. So I've got switch go. Okay. I've got, and I, uh, what I call JB is jailbreak. So they're bringing the Z up and underneath. Uh, and then I always tag them by numbers. Z, Z is always to the strong side, things like that. So I, I now I can go through here and I can look, okay, I got switch go three times and I've got Z jailbreak two times. So I'm going to go back over here and all I'm going to put in is uh, I've got switch go three times. I've got Z jailbreak two times. And then just from here, you know, what I don't normally do is all these one hitters. I kind of, I kind of look through it, you know, Apache is a screen, a uh, dagger shallow. So I, what I would do now is I would just kind of go through and look at these, any kind of RPO like this one inside zone stop. Okay. Well, I want to make sure I label that. So I'm going to, I'm going to duplicate it again. And I'm just going to go over here and inside zone stop. And we got it one time and I'm just going to put it, I'm, I'm going to put it right here. So I, I can see, okay, I now, I now know over him, this is where the stop is going. So I, now we're reading it. So you can go, you know, kind of halfway in, halfway out, wherever you feel you want to line it up on your, on your hit chart. And so now I can build this. And then again, I can go through here. What I like to do too is any kind of, any kind of, uh, you know, gadget play or whatever. I always highlight it a different color. That way it's visually, I can see that. So like, let's say that they had a reverse pass on here. Well, I would come over here when I get into my hit chart and I'd say, let's go reverse, pass. They did it one time. Okay, well, I, I want to know that they did that one time. So I'm going to come over here and I usually get, label it yellow so that it, it's kind of, or uh, orange so that it's in its own, so that it's in its own thing. So this is a good way of, one, if you're getting RPOs, go ahead and label the run concept. And then what was the front side pass concept? This was a stop. Was it a switch route when, Two goes to block the corner. One comes underneath. Uh, for me, you know, I want to make sure I'm paying attention. We get a lot of switch goes. So to me, what they're doing is if I, anytime I get a switch route, I need to be cognizant. Is, is the man blocking or is he running a vertical route? Because they run jailbreak as well. So right now I'm already calculating my game plan. I'm already looking at it. I can see this. And this is all just from, this is all just from here. You know, looking at huddle beta. I haven't even, I, you know, I haven't even watched film yet. I'm just, I, you know, I just made my cut ups and I'm already, I'm already here. Now I too, I can write down, okay, well, what, when we get two by two, I need to be able to defend shallow. I need to be able to defend dagger. Um, Apache screens, the same thing as a jailbreak. Okay. So to me, it's just a double screen. So, okay. Now I, now I know, okay, I'm still getting a jailbreak Z sluggo. Uh, I got one sprint out. So there's really not a tail there. Uh, and then a deep switch. So I, I can, and so what I will do is because there's not that much information, I can go ahead and I would just type though, I would just go ahead and come back in here and I would type all those in. Uh, but just for time's sake, I'm not going to, because I don't think you want to sit here and watch me type these all in. So uh, that, that right there is 10 personnel two by two. So what I'll, I'll come back over here. I'll get rid of, I'll get rid of this. So I've got all of these. So now I'm going to go back to uh, formation or set and I'm going to go three by one. And then I'm going to go formation and I say, okay, I've got 
gunfire twist means uh, number three was on the ball. I only got one hit of that. So I'm probably just going to go ahead and put it in with the gunfire trips and not make its own card. But I am going to denote what the play was if it was different than something else. So I'm going to go gun near trips. We got nine clips of that. So I'm going to go back over here. I got gun near trips. I got nine clips of that. So I'm going to click that, go back over. I've got five passes and four runs. Okay. So I've got my four runs. I got my five passes. So now I'm ready to go. And again, I didn't get any shifts and I didn't get any motion. Now, the one thing that I didn't do and I need, and, I, and I'll show you how to do this uh, is to check the FIB. Uh, so here, if I want to go back, you know, I already got FIB. I got one clip of that. So what I would do, what I would do there is because it's not that much, I'm just going to go ahead and put one. Probably don't need to worry about it other than if it was kind of like a, uh, it was a screen or it was some sort of kind of a, a weird play or a gadgety play or, hey, they're just, they got trips in the boundary to hit X on a slant route. But, hey, uh, in my mind, I'm like, I'm going to go back and check that. So now I'm going to do, the, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come here and I'm going to, I'm going to select run. Okay. Well, here's my report. I got three clips inside zone and I got one clip of counter swap. Now I tag, like I said, I've got inside zone three times and I've got counter swap one time. Now I tag the pass inside, inside, the the run concept so I know that it's an RPO. So I can look how many times they actually handed it off, how many times they actually throw it. So now, now we're going to go back to the passes. Okay. Go ahead and click off that right here. I can pull this up again. Now I've got S jailbreak twice and I've got sprint out deep switch. So I'm going to do this S jailbreak. So that's the number two coming back on a on a tunnel screen. I got that twice. I've got sprint out. Um, let's see what it was. Sprint out, deep switch, SFL. Sprint out, deep switch. One time, SFL. One time. Now, if you saw that, I had counter swap again. Okay, but I only had it one time. So I'm going to come over here, counter swap. And they threw it one time. So I know if I get a swap screen, I already know, man. Hey, look, here's the deal. If I get this, we need to be looking for that little swap. Well, they match it with jailbreak. So we can kind of look at, okay, are they pulling them away or are they, they bring in the tackle out here? If the tackle's coming out, it's a tunnel screen. If the tackle's pulling away, we know that we're getting the counter. So now, I've, now I'm kind of already getting my game plan in here. And I haven't, again, like I said, I haven't even touched film yet. I've just used beta to create this, this hit chart. Uh, and so now, now we can go to the next one. And this will be our last one because, uh, like I said, with 11 personnel, I only got, I only got, uh, only got two hits of it. So I want to make sure, okay, got everything. Don't need pass. Coming back here to gun far trips. Only have three clips of it. Well, they're all passes. Divide, burst, and stop. So I, I, I'm going to go ahead and come over here. I got it three times. Zero runs. Zero runs. And now I've got three passes. I don't need any runs. Don't need these. Let's double check. Make sure we didn't have a trips into. I don't think so. I think, we only, like I said, I think we only had one. Don't have anything here. So FIB falls off of it. That's the other thing. If it doesn't have it, it gets rid of it. Um, then come back over here. I've got divide, verts, and stops. Now, when I'm seeing this, divide tells me that I'm getting like a bubble and I'm getting three verticals. They're dividing the field into three. Verticals means I've got four verticals. And then stops just means what it does. So when I'm thinking, when I get the gun to the weak, when I get the back to the weak side one, I'm getting 100% pass. Okay. But the other thing is now I know, hey, it's probably going to go deep. I want to be thinking two out of three, that's, that's vertical. So I'm thinking, hey, they're passing the ball down the field. Now I already have an idea of, okay, now we can game plan this. Maybe we can attack the back. Maybe we can do some things where, hey, when we get the back weak, we're running this pressure. When we get the back strong, we're running this pressure because these are the, these are the passes that we're getting with, with that. Then I can go back and look and say, okay, well, how many, how many of these are actually on third down? Oh, well, that's the nice thing. Uh, with huddle beta, 
you can go and look. Okay, well, two first downs were verts and stops, and then the one third down was the divide. So what if I saw here and it was flipped? I had the one was stops on first down and two on third down was vertical pass. Now I instantly have it. Now, this isn't great data because I only have three shots of it, but I can also look. They only did it after 10. So I know now, hey, 10 plus, I'm probably going to get this, and it's probably going to be a pass. So I need to be ready for it. Uh, so, again, you're building your game plan, and you're just taking notes. You're just taking notes of different things that you want to look at. You've already created cut-ups, but now I've used this to create a hit chart that I can now go back on. I've got notes in my binder uh, that I'm, I'm writing down as I'm studying these things. What I really like uh, Huddle for, uh, the beta, and where I think it's a game changer is on the D&D &D stuff. So now I can go and look at, hey, when are, when are we getting passes? When are we getting runs? So I've got 13. I can go back and look, okay, well, I know that if it's third and six plus, you know, it's only two shots. But if I'm coming here and there's, you know, hey, I know right now if it's third and six plus, they're running the ball. They're, try they're trying to run the ball. Um, and so what I could do, I could do now is now I could go back through and I can look at all these and now I can really start doing my down and distance stuff. You know, what are they doing on first down? Well, this team's 70% on, on first down, 30% run. So what now, how am I going, to, how am I going to defend that? How, what my mentality can't be a run stop on first down, because if you look at this team, second down is now 70% run. So if they don't get a first down or get – they're going to run the ball. You know, so now I can go and say, okay, where are those passes coming? Well, they're kind of all over the place. All right. Where are the runs come? Runs, well, look, if it's third and long, they're running the ball saying, look, we're just going to get half so that way we can get a manageable third. That tells me how that offense is going to – is working. So on first down, they're pass first. They don't care. if it, Look, if it ends up being second and long, now I know, okay, I know the run's coming. So I'm putting in my notebook, okay, first down, okay, pass first, okay, anything second, second and, and, and seven plus or it, 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 second and long, so I'm doing second, I'm looking at it right now, okay, it's 70% run, so if they get to a second down, I know right now, hey, I'm, I'm looking at it for, I'm looking at it for the pass, I mean, it, it's 30% pass, it's 70% run, so now I know, okay, look, oh, wow, they threw, they threw the ball, on, on second and short because they probably figure that they can get it. It's a bonus down for them. So when I look at third and five, it's 50-50. So when I get, I mean, second and five. So when I'm thinking second and less than five, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, uh, you know, pass. I'm thinking 50-50 pass. So it's 50-50. I need to make sure that I've got things that are attacking, uh, can are good against the run and good against the pass. Now I look at it and I say, okay, it's second and seven, second and eight. Second and 10, second and 11. Man, that's 86% run. They're just trying to get, they're just trying to win this down and go. So anytime I get second, you know, and seven plus, six plus, I know right now, hey, they're, they're running the ball. I need to have, I can't be, I don't need to send on, because a lot of people check on second and seven. It's like a passing down. I don't need to be sending an exotic blitz on second, on second and seven, uh, seven plus, because they're probably going to run the ball. What are some good run stopping things that I can do that if they feel like, hey, we're going to go ahead and pass the ball, then then I'm going to do that. Because if you look here, now we got it. We got a sluggo. That was the one pass on. So you tighten up. You say, okay, I, you know, don't get overcomplicated and say, okay, I'm just going to uh, second and seven plus. I'm going to send the house, gap it out, and I'm going to go man coverage. Okay, well they saw that. And if, if you do that, they're going to run. They can run sluggo there. So they're not afraid to run it a double move. What I'm saying is they're not afraid to take a shot if they need to or if the opportunity is there. This is a good team, by the way. It's one of the best teams in 3A uh, in Texas. So for me, I'm already – I haven't even touched the film, okay? I've now just used – I've now just used Huddle Beta, and I already am starting to get a game plan for, for my down and distance. Now I've got second and seven plus. I know this is a run down. I probably need to bring five-man pressures, some creeper pressures, replacement pressures that are really good against the run, but they're also – great against the pass. Uh, then you come down to, now we'll clear our filters out. Now let's go to third down, okay? Well, third, that's run, third and short, third and five. Okay, so I know if it's third 
in less than six, it's run. I need to have, again, that's, I'm treating, I'm treating second and seven plus and third and six, uh, less than six as it's almost the same down because it, that's, they're, they're, they're run heavy. That's a run heavy down. Now you go eight plus, you know, 10, 11, well, that's an 100% pass. I just found, I just found the mark, right? So third and seven plus equals 100% pass. So now, now on my call sheet, I can start building. What do I want for third down pressures? Well, I got to be careful because if I go look at the reports, they're kind of all over the place. Okay. But I see uh, an RPO. I need to probably go look at when, when, where that was on the field um, and then a jailbreak. Okay. You know, I, I've got to be cognizant that, look, they will throw, they will throw a screen. But really, I'm getting you know, double slant flat, I'm getting shallow, dagger, divide, I got a sprint out, um, a rub, so maybe we're playing man cover, shallow, vert, steep switch, they're pushing the ball down the field, okay, now I know, okay, this, here we go, here I can bring in my stem pressures, here I can bring in some of my exotic front looks, these are things that I can, now we can really kind of cook, you know, we're cooking with, we're cooking with, with some things now, now that I know, hey, look, we get 37 plus our packages, now, now we can get our, we can get our speed package in there, we can do kind of some different things, uh, on third down and get them get them going. Now I need to look at protection. Okay, what is their protection on third and long? That's when I go back to the film and I start I, and I start looking at that. Um, and that's the other nice thing that if that's one of the headings that you got that you have on there, you can pull it up. You know, third and long, what's the protection? You know, are they getting the back out? You know, things like that. Who are they targeting? All of those things can be all of those things can quickly be looked up. So when I look at huddle beta, that's essentially what I'm doing is I'm building my game plan. And then I'm going to look at the. Then I'm going to look at the film to see, okay, what are the pass? What are the pressures? What are the line stunts? How are we going to fit the way that they block power? How are they don't run it? But how are we going to fit the way that they block counter? How are we going to fit the way that they block inside zone? What are we doing now? We have the idea with G wrap now. So then the last thing is fourth down. Uh, you know, fourth and long was run. Run. And I got I got one pass and one run on on fourth and short. So to me, you know, to me it's 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 heavy run. I need to go back and look. Hey, what are we getting? You know, we got the this they love speed option on fourth down because everybody's packed into the box. I need to make sure that I'm cognizant on fourth down. Hey, we're getting speed option. I need to make sure whatever we're calling on fourth down isn't crazy. We got G wrap and we got switch go. So to me, I need to make sure. That right there, all of those things are their base things. Speed option is kind of their answer to when everybody gets it real tight in. So I don't want to – if I show that, I better have something that's, that's going to be good against speed option if I show them that, I, that I'm willing to, to come all up there. So, you know, that's essentially how I go through, how I go through this. And, and the, the, again, like I said, the nice things about this is that I can go through and I can, I can click anything I want to uh, and kind of get it down. What's really nice is when you're in staff meetings, you have one of your younger staff guys having their computer up. And so as you're leading the meeting and you're kind of going through these cut-ups, you can say, hey, get on beta and tell me how many times they did this. Or, hey, you know, I'm noticing, you know, inside zone and G-Rap are, are their top ones. Hey, how many times do they run G-Rap when the nose is to the back? You can quickly pull that up just like I did. And so now you guys are working collaboratively on your film stuff. And what beta has done is been able to kind of say, hey, go look this up for me. And it's instantly right there. So I would have in my meetings, I'm going to have someone with the beta pulled up. So as we're going through our cut ups, you know, I've already looked at all this stuff, but I'm, you know, hey, maybe I didn't notice when I was looking at this. Hey, maybe that light bulb didn't come on inside zone G rat inside zone. Maybe that has to do with the nose. So now I'm thinking, OK, now I get in there and I start noticing. I'm like, you know what? Every time that nose is the base, that looks like G rat hey, why don't you go ahead and check that out? And then that, get, that guy can go ahead and check that out really quick. Boom, we see the film. He looked at it. Cut-ups are there. Hey, let's go ahead. Now, we, now we've got a game plan. So now from this, what I've done is I've got my hit chart. So let's go back to the hit chart. I've got my hit chart all set up. And so all I got to do now is now start formulating the game plan of how, first of all, how are we defending this formation? What are the coverage that we want to run? What are some of the things that we need to be cognizant of? So for me, gun near two doubles, you know, hey, it's a lot of screen. Okay, so we we need to make sure, hey, one, if, if we're playing man, we, we're working on uh, block destruction or we're 
we're cognizant that we're going to get a lot of screens, not a lot of RPOs. And then our front structure matters. I can make a, a, a mark right here uh, and just say, hey, on fourth down, I need to be thinking speed option right now. So to me, that's something that's, e that's easy that you can do. And why I like hit charts, because now I can take these and I can, I can have them anytime I want, and I can look at them while we're doing the game plan. So hopefully this helped you out using beta uh, with this and being able to pick and, and, and pull things. And then I have my notebook that I, that I use. I draw things up. I list this stuff up. And then that way I can, you know, I put my ideas down on it and I got it. So something to think about as you're going through this. Uh, again, hopefully that help, this helped you out. Thanks for joining me today. You can find everything you need on matchquarters.com. Uh, I also wrote a book, uh, How to kind of break down your opponent. You can find that on Amazon. If you go to matchquarters.com, you click on uh, archives, you can find all of my links and you can find all uh, and a link to all of my books. There's also a book link on there as well. Make sure to check out matchquarters.substack.com. That's kind of where I'm writing everything now. Come subscribe to that. Always follow me on Twitter at the underscore coach underscore A. Use the hashtag Art of X to find everything. And that QR code right there too will take you to, will take you to my books. As always, DMs open. So if you have questions, uh, hit me up. Also, I have a contact form on matchquarters.com that you can email me directly. Thank you again for joining me. Hopefully you got something out of this. Uh, and, and hey, man, go use Huddle Beta and go win some games.